Hey everyone, Mark McComb here, and in this video, we'll be setting up a serial communication between the PIC16F18446 Curiosity Nano board, populating the future 8 ball in a serial terminal on a host computer. The Curiosity Nano boards all feature a CDC communication link where a separate MCU from the target device implements a USART to USB converter. So essentially, all you really need to do is connect a USART to appropriate pins and then essentially do a write to the serial port. I'll demonstrate how to easily set this up using a graphical programming plugin for Microchip Technologies MPLAB X IDE called the MPLAB Code Configurator or MCC for short. So let's get started by connecting the Future 8 ball to an available USB port on our host computer. Next, open MPLAB X IDE and let's create a new project for the PIC16F18446 by clicking on the new project button at the top of the IDE. In the new project window, leave the settings for a standalone project and click Next. Now select the PIC16F18446 as the target device. You can simply just start typing in the last few digits of the part number and MPLAB X will display some options. Now the future 8-ball is populated with a Curiosity Nano, so select that as the programming debugging tool and click Next. Choose the MPLAB XC8C compiler and click Next. In the Select Project Name and Folder, select a folder where your project files will be located and name the project something, keeping in mind that you don't want the name to be too long. Now click Finish to build the project. Next, open the MCC by clicking on the icon in the IDE toolbar. We're going to save the .mc3 file, which will hold all of the configuration settings for the device that we are about to set up. Inside of MCC, just make sure that the high frequency internal oscillator is selected and then navigate to the device resources section. This is where all the peripherals for this particular device are listed. Scroll down until you locate the USART peripheral and add it to the project by clicking on the green plus sign next to it. We can leave everything at its default settings, including a baud rate of 9600. Note that the module does let you know the percent error of your USART comms based on the device clock settings and will let you know if you're out of spec. All we really want to do here is assign the STDIO library to the USART so that we can use printf commands. So we'll do that by checking the redirect STDIO to USART box here. These devices feature the ability to route various peripheral signals to different pins using a, a feature called peripheral pin select. In this case, we're going to want to assign the USART transmit and receive pins, but we don't know which pins actually connect to the secondary device on the Curiosity Nano board, which handles the USART to USB conversion. To get this information, what we're going to do is navigate to the kit window, which should be populated once you connect the board to your system and open MPLAB X. In the kit window, you should see a number of different resources, including the schematic for the board. Simply click on the link to open the schematic. At the very start of the schematic, you should see an overview of all the connection details for a variety of connected features on the board. In this instance, we can see that the CDC serial port connects to pins RB4 and RB6, which coincides with the USART transmit and receive signals on the PIC16F18446. Using that information, we can now go back to the Code Configurator Pin Manager and tie the receive and transmit signals to those pins. The Generate button here is clicked to generate all of the code based on the configuration inside of the Code Configurator. Clicking on the Projects tab, we can now see all the various header and source files generated, including a main.c file. Double-clicking on the main.c file will open it in the source window. Let's go ahead and add some code by scrolling down to the while one loop. Here we're going to add a printf statement to transmit our message. Remember that we can use this printf statement because we selected the redirect STDIO to USART checkbox in the USART configuration window inside of MCC. Backslash M will print to a new line and the backslash R will implement a carriage return. Compile the code by clicking on the Build and Compile button at the top of the IDE. Mm -hmm. 
So once we've successfully compiled the project, we can go ahead and program the device by clicking on the button here. In this case, we get an error, and this just means that the future eight ball board isn't turned on. Therefore, what we're gonna to need to do is make sure there's batteries installed into the board. And second, we're gonna use this power switch here, SW1. When the LED on the Curiosity Nano stops flashing and stays lit, the board is ready to be programmed. Click the Make and Program Device button again, and this time the board should successfully program. I'll open the Data Visualizer plugin inside of the MPLAB X IDE to view the serial data by clicking on the button at the top of the IDE. Inside of the Data Visualizer, select the serial port for the Curiosity Nano and click the Play button. Note that the specific COM uh, port number on your machine is going to vary. We will also want to make sure all of the COM settings are the same as configured in the code configurator, which uh, they are, and then we can assign the serial connection to be displayed in the terminal window using the source drop-down menu here. If everything went as planned, we should see Hello World printed in the terminal. Next, let's add a delay to slow down this data transmission. Going back to the MCC device resources, we can see that not only uh, on-chip resources like peripherals are available here, but also other things including a foundation services library. This library provides some additional capabilities including a delay library. This can be added to our project by clicking the plus sign next to the library. We can leave everything in its default settings and simply regenerate the code to add the delay capabilities. Once regenerated, the delay source files are now added to the project. Inside of the delay header file, we can see that two functions are declared. We can add function calls in two ways here. First, by copying the function in the header file and then pasting it into our main.c file. We're gonna add how many milliseconds we wanna delay for, in this case, 500 milliseconds. The second way we can add a function call in our code is by typing the first few letters of the available function name, uh, hold down the control key on a Windows machine, which I'm using here, and then pressing the space bar, and this is gonna reveal any function that we can use that starts with those letters. Double clicking on the suggestion will actually add it to our code, but we're not going to use it since we've already added it. Let's click on the Make and Program button to reprogram the PIC16F18446. Once programmed, we should see the output in the data visualizer now has a 500 millisecond pause between message prints in the terminal. And that's it. For more information on this project or others like it, please visit the links in the description. My name is Mark McComb. Thanks for watching.